Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Charmed Rewind. Are you excited, Phelan? Not really. <laughs> we had a good one this time. Yeah. It was called Monster Piper. <laughs> Guest starring pirates. <laughs> <laughs> so the category this time was the worst witches. Uh, so I took the uh, worst rated episode of every season, except for season three, because that was Wrestling with Demons, and we already covered that one, so it was the second worst rated in that one. <sighs> and the winner for that one was uh, season seven, episode four, Charmed! <laughs> We're gonna exclamation jump around point. a lot here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exclamation mark, very important. What do you mean we're gonna jump around a lot? Are you saying there was uh, a lot to talk about, or...? No, I just mean the episodes we're doing. We're bouncing around a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't want it to just be, like, consistently in one season the whole time. Yeah, I know. But we were just way closer to the beginning, and then we're jumping into season seven. Oh, yeah. What a stark difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, Before we, we dive into... uh to charmed too far i wanted to give a shout out to uh, a couple people who did uh, some amazing fan art uh <laughs> based on uh my request to make some fan art based yes. on uh our last episode uh we compared piper to uh ursula and mm -hmm. uh ursula and flotsam and jetsam as her two horrible sons yeah holly marie combs for the live action remake is ursula mm -hmm. <laughs> get that trending yeah. Um, so we had a couple people just bringing them up here. Okay, so uh, shout out to UH Studios on Twitter. That's at UH Studios. And they did an amazing uh, picture of uh, Holly Marie Combs and her two horrible sons. I mean, <laughs> Piper and her two horrible sons. Her poor, uh, unfortunate <laughs> sons. Yeah. Oh, they, they even included like a... um. Uh, one of those little shrunken heads that are all miserable, but it's Leo mm -hmm. at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. And they um they do like uh, comics and stuff. So uh, you guys should check them out. Uh, there was also a fantastic one from uh, Nyarlotep Bonaparte. And I'm really sorry for the name. I'm, I'm sure I butchered it there. That's uh, at Nyarlo with the O is a zero. Tep. Uh, which is pretty good. I like that. Um. I, I like that Wyatt is cross-eyed in that one. <laughs> uh, they got the evil eyebrows down really good with Piper, too. Mm -hmm. um, I think my favorite one might be the the one by Mr. Together, which is at Mista Together, uh, where uh, both of the boys have, like, vampire teeth. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like vampire goobers. <laughs> Pretty good. So thank you to them, and uh, I would appreciate it if anyone else had any uh, fan art related to this. Send it, uh, send it my way or Phelan's way, because that was pretty amazing. Yeah, it's great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but now we got to talk about um, a fantastic Piper episode, which is Charmed. Mm, it's <sighs> another. Um, it, we shouldn't really bother that trying that hard to save an innocent. I mean, it, it is. <laughs> They're awful. It is exceedingly cold how, like, horrible they are about the fact they don't save someone in this episode. Just, ugh. Oh, yeah. Well, Monsters. the fact that it just goes unacknowledged. Like, you know, there, it goes with, like, some of these shows that sometimes you don't save an innocent, but, like, usually they act like they at least care that it happened but That's here no thing. and like <laughs> and it was totally on them they had a lot of time to save this person and instead they're just dinking around the house like ah, well, i guess they don't even bother telling like their loved one that they died <laughs> yeah this this witch that dies in this episode has a partner who Paige goes to see and then She's like, oh, yeah, no, it's just my partner. She's the witch who's been stolen by pirates. And she's just like, okay. But Paige gets turned old. Like, I don't know, maybe Paige would have thought to tell her, but maybe she she still doesn't ever after this. So even after she gets turned young again. So it's just like, no, no one cares. <laughs> They're just like, whatever. You'll never know that your partner's dead in a dumb pirate cave somewhere. <laughs> I do want to say, I don't, I didn't remember 
that they had a gay woman in this or a couple gay women, I guess, Um, because I didn't remember them having like any LGBT representation at all. Well, why I mean, would this you is even so remember very minimal. This? Yeah, there's no reason to remember this because it's just a passing mention, really. That's like, oh, yeah, I'm gay with her. You never see them sure. together. And then sure. she's dead. <laughs> Yeah, you don't, like, they don't get, like, credit for being, like, super progressive with it because it's just a mention, but the fact that it happened at all, I, I didn't remember them doing anything in Charmed, which is uh, bizarre because they're in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. The fact that there's so little gay representation. Yeah. But given the um, the era and the channel that it was on, I don't know, I guess it's not too surprising. Mm-hmm. But even by then, Buffy had had a lesbian couple on the show for a while, so... Mm-hmm. Well, it's not Buffy quite as good first. as, by the way, uh, I was gay with that witch. Anyway, she's dead. Yeah, she <laughs> says it like the most, like, dancing around it way. You know, like, oh, uh, I am her partner. <laughs> yeah. Like, hmm, okay then. Well, <laughs> if we can fit you in, we'll bother to tell you she's dead later, but probably not. Mm, we'll see if we can fit you in our schedule. <laughs> like when you see the pirates go after this woman, you're like, "Well, she's dead." Like it's gonna be a huge shock if the charmed ones save anyone. They're like, it's such a bad percentage for them. You to know what? Save it's really anyone. sad that we kind of you kind of knew that she was gonna die before she did, right? Like you see yeah. it, and you're like, mm, "Red shirt." Mm -hmm. <laughs> like even when she's still alive with the pirates it's still like yeah she's still gonna die the charmed ones aren't gonna get there in time to save her she's she's gonna be the uh the lesson you know that's what's gonna happen to Paige, who's the mo yeah. most important character so. and, and like she dies and then immediately Paige is olded and they make a joke and then they just never bother to bring up the fact that witch died again surprise bitch I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me <laughs> yep. <laughs> anyway, that part's over. Okay, uh, b before we uh, get too much farther, let's rewind a little bit. <laughs> um, in case you didn't get, the premise of this episode is pirates, uh, because Pirates of the Caribbean had come out uh, fairly recently. They might have been on the sequel by that point, the second one. Mm. I'm not sure. But either way, this is, I think, the most cash in episode of just like straight up doing a movie. Yeah, they could just call it Parlay of the Caribbean. Par, sleep, par, no, par, no. Parlay? That's the one! Parlay! Parlay! <laughs> there are so many, like, story beats, story elements that they just rip straight from that movie. Like, it's even worse than Harry Potter Magic School. <laughs> <laughs> Which is in this episode, too. It's a real yeah. meeting of worlds there. Oh, man, they have that, and then they have the, like, the, the entrapment slash Mission Impossible scene going on. It's just a hodgepodge of it's, other yeah. things that they've and stolen. Entrapment, like that wasn't even a current thing to reference by that no, they, point. No, but they, but they knew sexy lady and lasers. Uh -huh. So let's have Aly Alyssa Milano do the same thing that Catherine Zeta Jones did. <laughs> sure, why not? That seems like pirates. <laughs> All right, so uh, when this episode starts, uh, we see a depressed and scruffy Leo. Uh, he is depressed because uh, three episodes prior, he has murdered James Avery. Mm -hmm. uh, because the avatars were influencing him, I believe. Yeah, I think because because he because of what happened with Gideon, I think. Yeah, maybe James Avery was like, I don't know. He found something out, and yeah, Leo went nuts and killed him before James Avery could throw him out the door, <laughs> which would have destroyed <laughs> Leo. <laughs> Leo's a real DJ Jazzy Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not the only one. <laughs> um, it, it, this is him through the whole episode. He's just depressed and feeling guilty because he murdered another elder. At this point, he's an elder. And Piper actually gives him some really good advice. She comes in and says, get over it. Who cares? And then leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, the, these two are separated at this point. So they're taking care of the kids together, but they're not seeing each other. And uh, he thinks Piper's like going on a date. He's like super depressed. And, um, <laughs> you know, and she's like, let the past be the past. <laughs> Go play nice with the other elders. 
three episodes ago. He murdered someone three episodes ago. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, even if they're not together, she could at least try to be a human being. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's not. I, I'm not using this to excuse her behavior in any no, way. Know. It just mean like it adds to his depression, the fact mm-hmm. that they're not together anymore. Yeah, honestly, uh, it's hard to even tell the, the difference of when they're not together and when they are, because she treats them the same way when they are together. <laughs> I know, if they hadn't had that line about like, oh, are you going on a date? I would never know that they weren't together in this episode. <laughs> That's yeah. so sad. <laughs> I hope Leo eventually, like, divorced her for really reals and, like, led a happy life, because this was clearly not a good relationship. Mm-hmm. Maybe in the season 10 comics that happens. I'll have to yeah. find out. <laughs> I think what happens there is James Avery comes back and throws Leo out the door. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I lived, bitch. Surprise, bitch. I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. <laughs> ah! Season 10. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe in the season 10 comics it said, DJ Jazzy Jeff yell. <laughs> Cue Fresh Prince of Bel-Air music. I don't know why they did that. It didn't seem very good for a comic medium. Yeah, but it was the best thing Charmed ever did, so... <laughs> So um, at this point, Leo is not allowed back into White Light or Heaven or whatever um, because <laughs> of what happened with Gideon and the magic school. I, do you remember what exactly the circumstances were there? Oh, no. Is it because he killed him? He did kill him, right? Yeah, he killed Gideon. <laughs> right. He Cause... killed him like because he had to do a bad thing for the greater good. Yeah. It's all about the greater good. The greater good. Yeah, I, I think that was probably one of their somewhat better storylines in turn. Is him having to do that. But, uh... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so weird that, like, they know about him killing one person. Uh, I don't think he... Was he an elder as well, or he was just a powerful witch? Gideon. Gideon? Okay, so I looked it up, and Gideon was an elder. So, okay. All right. Gideon... Uh, Leo's in trouble for killing an elder, but also hiding the fact he killed another elder. <laughs> yeah, he's got quite the elder body count going on here. <laughs> Wait. So they're like, you're on probation or whatever, because he's still an elder, but, like, he can't tell him about the second elder that he killed. Like, he's like, oh, no, two of them, two strikes, I'm out. <laughs> What's that about? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> The one elder who seems to be played by, like, a local theater dad comes in, Mm -hmm. and he's just like, sorry, man, can't come in, but uh, I can give you something else to do. Why don't you check out these witches that are disappearing? Yeah. And then there's he leaves, and there's some appearance by, like, the Avatar skulls that, like, make no sense with what they do later. Yeah, it has nothing to do with this episode. It's just kind of part of the year. Like, just this episode's context has nothing to do with anything. No, it doesn't make sense in the context of the arc either, because they expect you to forget it. Because later it's like, hey, why are they like evil skull things if they were just saying like, hey, we're just some neutral party or whatever. And he's like, right. oh, that's just them getting my attention. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, that, yeah, it's really messy. So uh, he decides to go scrying for the missing witches, uh, and I I never remember what's consistent about the charmed rules. If like elders did scrying, I guess they do. Apparently, I think there's in this episode. Yeah, I think there's ones where Leo couldn't, but I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe elders can do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Piper is a huge bitch in this scene. <sighs> like he's he's trying to find innocents that have gone missing. Yeah, and she and then she's just like, ah, it's probably nothing. Don't be uh-huh. scrying for that. Whatever. I don't care how they disappeared. Oh, fog rolled in. It's San Francisco. That's probably what happened. Mm-hmm. Don't you have diapers to change? <sighs> yeah, like, just dismissing any possibility that something could have happened. Like. What what is the downside to him looking into it? He just doesn't babysit as much? Like, what is she complaining about? I don't know. She is the one who said, like, hey, you should call the elders and do something. And then he starts doing something and she complains about it. <laughs> Can't like, nothing win. Nothing is good enough for the shrew. <laughs> <laughs> what 
We've tried nothing and we're all out of ideas. I'm busy doing nothing, so you better take care of the kids. Yeah. <laughs> Stop moping around. Call the elders or something. I hate you. I called the elders and they got a case for- Don't do a case! Change diapers! Ah! <laughs> Leo! That did it, poison! <laughs> you gave them the poison breast milk, right? <laughs> you weren't feeding them any of this formula shit. <laughs> if you were, I'm gonna freeze you and then drop kick you into a bunch of chunklets again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, please don't. You're gonna end up like James Avery. <laughs> oh! I'm gonna tell the elders about what you did. <laughs> Massage my feet. <laughs> Takes her, her shoes off. She's got like corns and stink lines coming up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but lest anyone think that uh, Piper is the only one complaining, uh, Paige orbs in. <laughs> At this point, she is in charge of the Harry Potter magic school. Mm -hmm. uh, she's taken over from Gideon, but we don't see her doing any of that in the episode. She just complains no. because a kid I called her ma'am. Yeah, I don't think you ever get to see that much of her doing it. Like, there's some episodes, I think, set there, but it's not a whole lot. I think we only ever see her teaching, like, a class once. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we see her in the office in some robes complaining again. Yeah. <laughs> she seems to absolutely hate doing this job. <laughs> yeah, and she's kind of complainy about looking for these witches first because she's whining about the ma'am thing like oh i don't want to be old yeah well she but she's complaining about that but then she's eager to help the innocents because then that's something a young witch would be doing getting into the action you know yeah she eventually gets into that but for a moment there she's just kind of complaining about that which is a little Phoebe and Piperish. It's like, Paige, you're supposed <laughs> to be better than this. <laughs> I guess they're I guess they're making her kind of vain in this episode because she turns mm. old later. I guess they're making yeah. that part of her. That that's such a fresh take on the charmed ones. I'm glad they decided <laughs> Hey, you know the one who isn't as vain as the other two? What if we made her vain? You getting me here? So then we'll have the vain one, the vain one, and the vain one. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. V3. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, she calls Daryl Morris. She's like, what about Morris? He's in their shit books right now. Yeah, because it seems like it wasn't since like the early seasons that they called him Morris. Mm -hmm. But he's like uh, hanging out with Sheridan all the time at this point. So they don't they just call him Morris now. Yeah. Because he did the all, I don't want to know, I don't want to know thing to don't them, and know. they're mad at him, so he's Morse. Is that because this was past the point where he was almost uh, sentenced to death? I believe so, yeah. And he's just like, alright, I'm done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Despite the fact they did murder him to steal his soul at one point, <laughs> without his permission, but that wasn't the breaking point for him. No. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was quite patient with them. <laughs> Yep. But you know, the vain one, the vain one, and the vain one, how they are. They're kind of vain. <laughs> Pinky in the vein. <laughs> That's something, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, Sheridan, who, uh, to remind the viewers or listeners, whatever you want to call them, um, she is the agent who is trying to expose them. Mm -hmm. And she's uh, Morris's new partner. And they're uh they're parked outside the house, staking them out, and then Paige goes, Is that legal? <laughs> like, what? Is it illegal for a police to stake out somewhere? Like <laughs> Yeah. No. They're the what? <laughs> She's gonna take herself in later for this. <laughs> <laughs> Was that supposed to be a funny line that she says is that legal? <laughs> I maybe <laughs> You can't stake out witches. <laughs> Only we can do all this shady shit. The weird thing, too, is they act like, oh, we can't go help the witches who are being fogged away by pirates with her watching us, even though Paige just orbed into the house. <laughs> she just did. And, like, and Piper can freeze her, which she does do after she comes out with a tray of food to try and be cute or something. <laughs> and she's like, she freezes her. 
and then she talks to Morris for a bit, whining at him. And then she unfreezes her, and then Phoebe drives away. <laughs> like, why did you unfreeze her before Phoebe drove away? <laughs> this is so weird, because you never see Phoebe in the episode prior to this. I didn't even catch it was supposed to be Phoebe driving away until you yeah. said it. Yeah, I didn't till she was talk she went into the work and she was complaining about them staking out the house and stuff. It was like, wait, oh, so that's Phoebe who left. I was like, yeah, you never saw her in the house at all. It was just that Piper was so and weird. Paige. It almost seemed like Alyssa Milano was mad at them for some reason and just wanted as little scenes as possible <laughs> with the other two. <laughs> yeah, quite possible. <laughs> It's weird in that scene, too, uh, when Piper goes out with the breakfast, the only time she seems to care about saving innocence is because it, she's distracting uh, Sheridan and it's protecting them. Mm hmm. Like, it's yeah. like, ah, Sheridan's getting too close. I guess I'll get rid of her. Yeah, and she can go out and be mean to Daryl and yell at Sheridan, so she likes that. Um, During this scene... Sheridan, this is the first of twice in the episode where someone pronounces their last name Hollowell. Mm-hmm. Both Sheridan and Daryl called him Hollowell. Yeah, that's weird. I, I feel like Daryl probably did a few times call them Hollowell th during the run of the series. It seemed inconsistent. They are pretty hollow. <laughs> it seems like if that's the last name of your main character seven seasons in, you should probably have a consistent way to pronounce it. You would think. <laughs> <laughs> like can't do another take of this <laughs> uh it's hallie well nah, nah, who cares just next next <laughs> shot moving on <laughs> um okay so so getting into the pirate stuff the sweet pirates of the caribbean knockoff shit mm -hmm. um so the the girl that gets kidnapped uh she's walking down an alley some fog rolls up she runs into her apartment and then she's pirate napped Hmm. And the pirates leave a coin after they kidnap someone, which is because it was stupid. <laughs> beca because it was a plot point in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, that's the only reason they but, leave a coin behind. <laughs> but it's so dumb because that's how Paige finds them later. I mean, I guess they, they want them to find them though. Yeah, I guess so. It's just uh, silly. I think they just left it as a clue because they wanted them to find it. To I find guess them. so. I mean, if we can give the episode any credit. <laughs> It's just they move so slowly on that ever coming into play. <laughs> sure. Just everyone's like molasses. <laughs> so she's taken to the pirate lair in, I don't know, the some the, the phantom zone somewhere. <laughs> I, they never establish where this is. Yeah, this can't um, be very far, though, because Sheridan and Daryl show up there later. Yeah, they could just wander in there. They never explain how they found it. Yeah, I thought it was like supposed to be somewhere kind of far, like on an island maybe even, until they just stroll in. So it was like, well, no. where is this? Just like down the block? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's in the basement of the apartments. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> where's a 308? Oh yeah, that's the pirate cave. There. <laughs> Oh, okay. There's, there's people above them. They're like, <laughs> yeah. keep it down. Look, Quit I guess. No, you, know, you guys shanties. are. Some of us aren't immortal. Some of us have to go to work in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> They're having one of their dumb pirate, undead pirate parties down there. <sighs> Save it for the weekend, assholes. <laughs> one of the pirates is like, I'm in a band. I'm allowed to play drums whenever I want. <laughs> <laughs> Drum. Yes. Why is Rum gone? The, the lead pirate. You like the look of that guy? <laughs> oh, man. I just wrote Captain Lamo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his real name is just as dumb, though. His name's Captain Blackjack Cutting. And guess what he does in this? <laughs> he cuts people and it makes them old. <laughs> what the fuck is that about? <laughs> They're pirates cutting. who they cut people with the magic sword and it turns them old. They named him Blackjack Cutting. <laughs> Holy shit, so uncreative. This guy kind of made me think he's like discount Max von Sydow because his voice yeah. kind of sounds like him. You know, I will say this. Um, I, I think like he was a good actor with a bad role. 
Because I feel like I could see him in something good. Yeah, his makeup didn't help, but his voice was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he sounded like an old-timey pirate. So, mm -hmm. I mean, like, I think in, like, a, a better role, he's probably fine. Mm -hmm. He was uh, saddled with some pretty bad material. Yeah. He, he even says the line, Don't you just love cliches? <laughs> <laughs> All right, charmed. <laughs> Don't you just love being terribly uncreative and ripping off a massively popular franchise and then quoting it, and then if you just name drop it, then it's okay. <laughs> no, it's not okay. If you just say Pirates of the Caribbean two or three times in the episode, it doesn't mean that you're clever. Mm hmm But that is like BB's big thought too once they find out it's pirates they're dealing with she's like i know i'll go to the paper and talk to the media <laughs> guy about pirate movies yeah she asks nick lachey of 98 degrees this is during his run so well she, she's asking someone else first and then nick lock shows up he's like actually <laughs> i watch pirate movies with my dad all the time so i'm the pirate expert <laughs> And this never comes again. It's nothing useful. No. <laughs> she gets nothing. Well, she knows about Parlay, I guess. I guess that's where she learned that. Parlay! 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 But that was a movie she already saw. She already saw Pirates oh, of the Caribbean. Okay, so then. She well, learned screw you, him. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that guy that she talks to. Um, she asked for the information. She went to him a couple other times in the season because they were trying to make it like seem like it was more helpful that she worked at the newspaper. Like she could ask some of them, a la like you know the Daily Planet or something. <laughs> like, ah, oh, we're gonna ask for the the researcher or the journalists that go into these cases about these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Um, but it never actually turns up anything useful. It's just another thing they thought oh, would be something but it's, wasn't and it's mostly just talking about phoebe's stupid love life again because it's like nick lock is like hey what if we had a contest where <laughs> someone gets to date you no, no no he um the date was the the win a date with phoebe contest was elise's idea right. which phoebe says but she's like annoyed about it like yeah, i know there's a dating contest <laughs> and i'm just gonna cancel the whole thing i don't want to go on dates and mm. then stupid nick lock is like oh, well uh what if it was a good pr thing that you did yeah. and then uh and then i won the date just strictly professional <laughs> yeah and then we see in the paper He's already printed where it says Nick creep. wins the date with Phoebe. It's like, what? Crown's mine, bitch. First of all, uh, that just shows you're massively corrupt and rigged your contest. Yeah, like, Secondly, what a fucking creep. What, who would see that and be like, oh yeah, that seems like it was random. Like owner of the... Or, manager of the paper wins the date with his employee like, <laughs> i think he was just a a ghost writer for her at that point so they were like both or he took over the column while she was like on a hiatus right so he is still like the temporary uh editor or whatever. yeah he still worked there it's like oh what a quinky dink that he mm -hmm. won this contest <laughs> so still temporary boss extremely corrupt <laughs> God, I don't feel for either one of these characters. This storyline's bullshit. <laughs> no, it's just so annoying listening to them talk about it. Like, oh, this is so cute, isn't it? <laughs> they act like this is, like, really romantic when mm. they pan down and then, like, he's already printed it and kind of smiles like, <laughs> you know, no. Mm -hmm. And later she reveals, I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but like later she reveals that she already knew about the paper uh, back when he's like, uh, he, he's pissed because she ends up missing the date because of uh, pirate related shenanigans. Mm -hmm. And then like, she's like, I already knew about this. And he starts arguing like, you're afraid of commitment or whatever. And then like, she's like, I thought it was professional. And he's like, of course it wasn't. You knew that. And it's like, okay, first of all, if you fucking say it's on a professional basis, don't get mad when someone takes it that way. You fucking gaslighting creep mm -hmm. uh, and secondly she could just say i knew you printed this out you fucking creep i'm not going on a date with you <laughs> yeah because that's a perfectly valid reason to cancel it mm -hmm. <laughs> but of course they just start like having sex in the office yeah it's one of those <laughs> don't you just love cliches where they're yelling at each other then they start making out <laughs> 
ew. ew. Also, ew was that uh, Ask BB bench, which is in front of the paper, I guess. Like, yeah. how many ads of her stupid face does she need to see? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite bit with that bench was in the... Uh... I think it was the season eight opener where after they've uh, faked their deaths and they take the personas of other people and then Phoebe is like posing as her cousin and she's standing outside and then she like looks wistfully at her own face. Because, <laughs> <on the bench. laughs> you know, you got the vain one, the vain one and the vain one. <laughs> The world is now such a talented beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I think about what the world's lost and wonder if the price was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> She's Thanos. <laughs> what did it cost? Everything. <laughs> um, okay, so the, these pirate dudes, right? Uh, they are cursed. They were cursed by witches 300 years ago because one of them, like, cut the heart out of a witch or something. Um, and they can only appear like during certain time periods and the fog rolls in or something. Uh, they're cursed to never die. It's the curse, curse of the black pearl, basically. Yeah, pretty much. It's the same thing. They even do straight up like, um, Phoebe stabs one of them with a sword and then they're fine. Like a lot of these scenes are just lifted straight from those movies. Yeah. Including the parlay chat. Yeah. They just, they, Almost verbatim steal the parlay chat. And then Phoebe just straight up says, like, you know, from Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> yeah. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that was really clever. <laughs> so Paige goes to the girl's apartment that disappeared. Um, she meets her girlfriend uh, and then she gives her this coin and they don't show it. They explain it later that she like scries using the coin and then appears there. But the way they edit it, it makes it seem like she just orbs in with the just yeah, holding the magic coin. homing coin, apparently. <laughs> yeah, it was weird editing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, the explanation doesn't come till after that scene. So it's a little weird. Mm -hmm. uh, she ends up getting stabbed like her neck gets cut uh, with the By old cutter! sword. By cutter! Cutting. <laughs> cutting sorry <laughs> don't want to fuck this one up oh <laughs> people my. are going to be actualing at us, uh, us about that one <laughs> actually blackjack cutting actually i know about this charm character <laughs> i have a poster of blackjack cutting on my wall <laughs> He was their greatest enemy next to Barbus. There were posters of him. Real sex symbol of the early 2000s. <laughs> Johnny Depp posters were ripped down and they put up blackjack cutting. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like there's a new pirate in town. <laughs> this is the tale <laughs> of Captain Jack Black cutting. <laughs> <laughs> He's the popper of charm. <laughs> <laughs> He's the, the explainer of poor. references. <laughs> <laughs> now back to the good part. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was kind of weird. Now we're changing diapers. <laughs> <laughs> Lactate and poison. That's where it's at. <laughs> Okay, Sheridan, I'm reloaded! <laughs> <laughs> so after, like, after Paige so bravely is like, I'm not orbing out of here and leaving this innocent, they cut her neck just slightly, and she's like, eh, I'm leaving! <laughs> <laughs> Bye! <Yeah. laughs> and upon learning that there's a witch there dying, they don't leap into action and sit around the house. Yeah, Piper's just annoyed that Paige got cut because she was out doing something. <laughs> yeah, she's annoyed she tried it all. She's like, you could have last year, so what did you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> Phoebe makes some reference like, ooh, pirates, like hot Johnny Depp pirates? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then she's like, ooh, even hotter, Jack Black cutting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, there's a picture of him in the book! And then there's like the most unflattering picture in the world. It's like drawn Ren and Stimpy style. <laughs> Ooh, dream boat! <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Nicklock. 
<laughs> rips up his picture and then <laughs> puts up blackjack cutting. <laughs> Suddenly the paper changes. Captain Jack Black cutting wins date with Ask Me. <laughs> On his uh, Teen Beat magazine interview, it says playing some blackjack. (laughs) (laughs) Cutting edge episode. (laughs) Like the fudding edge. (laughs) Okay, so cut to a scene uh, where Sheridan is chewing out Morris uh, for covering for the Charmed Ones. She knows something's up. And then we get the introduction of FBI boyfriend Agent Brody, (laughs) Mm -hmm. who shows up, who later becomes Paige's boyfriend. Um, He knows about magic, and he just straight up says it. Like, after all of Sheridan's like, something's up. Yeah, I'm going to figure this out. He's just like, oh, yeah, witches are real, and we're investigating it, and I'm putting part of this branch, and, like, I'm doing the X-Files or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to call in dead to work later. (laughs) Uh, Sheridan takes this pretty easily, too. She's like, what? They're not even human? Oh! How <laughs> do you know she is a witch? She looks like one! Yeah, 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 yeah. After this build-up, that's the payoff to her knowing? Uh-huh. This makes it even worse, the fact that, like, she shows up later and then Brody tranks her and is like, I'll take care of this. Uh, in a later episode, we find, out, we find out that he keeps her sedated in a hospital in a coma. Yeah. For something so preventable, he could have just not told her. Mm-hmm. He already knew about the Charmed Ones. Why did he need her? This was so needless. <laughs> yeah. In Sheridan's case, it was, I don't want to be sedated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the audience did, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what the episode did for us. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. If we're sedated, then, uh, then Ask Phoebe shows up in our dreams, all of Freddy Krueger. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Phoebe released! No! Uh, (laughs) Uh, So uh, Paige and Piper are doing some research on this, and uh, Paige is having some trouble seeing and hearing. Uh, She can't pay attention very well. Some signs that this old age is setting in, though they have no in-between stage at all. They never do any makeup on her. (laughs) Yeah, she's just normal, and then suddenly they come back and she's being played by an old woman. (laughs) Which was a good decision, because, yeah, holy yeah. shit, their old age makeup, not good. No. Piper is just making fun of her before they know anything's going on. She's like, what are you deaf to? Yeah, she is so horrible. <laughs> God. They do a, a cringeworthy line where Phoebe goes, yo, ho, hello. And uh, Piper says, you just call me a ho? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> She also teases uh, Phoebe about the date that she's going to go on because nothing fucking matters but dates in this show. Uh-huh. Meanwhile, <laughs> they know there's an innocent dying. Yeah, dying or could possibly be being killed at any moment. Now this is time to talk about Phoebe's love life. <sighs> <sighs> and in fact, in the very next scene, Piper and Phoebe wander into the pirate lair and, like, they look so stupid. Yeah, they, they're they not even trying. They're just, like, in the clothes they were wearing at the house. And they look like, you know, they should just be dinking around dusting things or something. <laughs> like, they don't look like they're ready to fight pirates. They have looks like they're at a shoe sale they're not particularly invested in. Yeah, Like, yeah. the prices are just a little too high. Like, mm. Mm, I'm just window shopping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think I want anything. Mm, I'll buy these online. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll use witch eBay. <laughs> <laughs> they find the old woman there who just like says a few lines and then immediately croaks. <laughs> mm-hmm. Another one saved thanks yeah. to the charmed ones. Yeah. And they don't care. No lip service, no, oh man, we could have saved her. Yeah, like you said, like, they never even go to her girlfriend and say, like, hey, we found your girlfriend, she's dead. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Nothing. No, they are hurtless. But they realize uh, that Paige is going to turn old, too, so they, they rush over there and then, like, go to commercial break with, like, a funny line? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she goes, now I'm a ma'am, I guess, or something like that. 
Boom. <laughs> yeah, play the comedy music. <laughs> like, like, someone uh... just died, you dumb episode. <laughs> <laughs> Their reverence for life. <laughs> It was so, when they get back to, like, when they come back from commercial, Piper shrieks Leo's name, Leo! He <laughs> comes running in, and she goes, heal this now! Yeah. And just talks about Paige as if she's some object or something. Uh-huh. Heal this now, take care yeah. of this. Cure the old out of her. <laughs> <laughs> like, heal the old? What? Uh-huh. The world? Then, surprisingly, Leo says, I can't heal old. <laughs> <laughs> he could heal neon signs earlier in the show, but old, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you can't fix stupid. <laughs> and that's uh, when that's... Piper shoots him in the face with lactated poison. <laughs> it's like in the fly when he like he vomits acid onto the guy and melts his arm. <laughs> Um, because Pirates of the Caribbean had a cute undead monkey, they have undead parrot in this. <laughs> Which Piper thinks about exploding. Yeah, she just wants to blow it up. It, it shows up with a message, uh, and it says, Shiver me witches! <laughs> witches. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Witches. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, so he's got a message for them to show up in the pirate lair, which they do, and they say in order to, uh, to help them cure, uh, old Paige, they gotta help them steal a chalice, a golden chalice that will help them find the fountain of youth, and somehow the fountain of youth will end their curse. I'm not sure if they really explain very well how these two things connect, but okay. Yeah, you know, just that's the way to get out of this curse, apparently, is the Fountain of Youth, and you need this chalice to activate the Fountain of Youth, apparently. Apparently. didn't Wasn't there something about a goblet or something also in Pirates of the Caribbean? Did he drink something and then turns human again, or like a regular mortal, I guess? Yeah, I think that's how it ended. I feel like there was some dramatic shot of a goblet falling down a pile of coins when he gets killed. <laughs> Yeah, because Johnny Depp had one of the coins or something, so the curse yeah. wasn't lifted. Yeah. Right, they drop the coins in the in the goblet and it does something. Mm. Please correct us, I know you will, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, and then Johnny Depp revealed he was a Decepticon, and then... <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to make it really wrong now. <laughs> Okay, uh, like, because I didn't get how you got from point A to point B in this joke scenario. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so so you're just done with that joke now? (laughs) Yeah, it was good. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And then they find a a golden lake, and then uh, (laughs) What's-His-Face shows up. What was the the Transformer at the end of that? Oh, Beachcomber. Yeah, Beachcomber. We won. We won. (laughs) really sad <laughs> anyway that was kind of weird now we're back in the club <laughs> <laughs> whoa Alyssa Milano's a real cinephile <laughs> uh then this is when the episode just turns into mission impossible they're just like fuck it like we're not even staying dedicated to one particular ripoff so they go into that where Phoebe and Piper are dressed all in black like cat burglars and go to steal the chalice and piper freezes the guard and the lasers and stuff it's like it seems like it's limited what she's frozen because when uh after phoebe does the whole entrapment bit where uh, like Catherine zeta jones she just like goes under the lasers all sexy like she picks it up and then it it sets the alarm off anyway yeah, Piper could have froze the button so when she takes it off it doesn't activate but they didn't think of that one she could have just frozen the guards while the alarm was going off and then left. Mm-hmm. There, there's so many things they could have done that they didn't. Not that it matters because no one comes after them. Though I think, like, Sheridan and Daryl and Brody are there, but they never explain. Like, I guess they just trailed them? Yeah, they're apparently wa- they're waiting for them to do this. And then, like, Brody goes, oh, wait, don't go after them yet. We need to catch them doing magic. 
which is <laughs> what they were just doing in that room, a lot of it. And he's just like, why weren't you catching them doing any of that magic then? Why wasn't there any security cameras in this place that had all of these lasers set up and all this other technology, like security, but they don't have cameras? Nah. They don't cover their faces. No, they just need black suits, that's it. In the middle of being there, too, like, Phoebe's cell phone starts ringing <laughs> because she missed the date with Nick Lachey, and then, like, Piper's like, You gonna answer it? <laughs> Can you shut up for a minute? <laughs> like, can you act like you're doing something? Like, can you commit to a scene like it matters in the slightest? Like, holy fuck. <laughs> like, there's being sardonic, and then there's being just you don't give a shit. And that's uh -huh. what Piper's doing constantly. Yeah, well, it just, it's to the detriment of the show at this point. There's making a joke about situations, then there's just acting like nothing ever matters. And Phoebe, for once, like... Even when Phoebe is not focused on dates, her story is just focused on dates. Mm -hmm. It's like when she doesn't want to date, there's always some asshole douchebag guy going like, But what if you dated me? You're afraid of commitment. You won't open up your heart. Like, it's just constantly with these stupid entitled men and vain Phoebe. Mm -hmm. The most unlikable people in the world. <laughs> Better get love advice from her. She goes through the same thing over and over, and we're supposed to act like it's new. Uh, so they go to the pirate lair, and uh, they get the Fountain of Youth. They summon it, and uh, Cutting drinks it and becomes young Cutting. Kind of a downgrade. <laughs> Not as sexy as old Cutting. <laughs> <laughs> Not as good a voice, that's for sure. That's true. He was more of a... Uh, outrageous okana kind of they think it's cool but <clears throat> not really yeah he's, he's really not young cutting for very long though because then he's like kill them and like oh wait he's not helping you other guys he's violated the pirate code so you should kill him and they're like yeah okay and they kill him and then they all die yeah they all <laughs> turn to dust it's like it's i mean these are the pirates are so dumb it takes like two sentences to be like hey wait a minute yeah <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. I oh, never thought of it that way. I guess we could kill him and then just finally be free to the curse. <laughs> it's the same kind of uh, folly that uh, that came on uh, Barbosa in Pirates of the Caribbean and that he waits until after he's mortal and then gets screwed. You know, he had the Fountain of Youth there. Mm -hmm. So before he drinks it and becomes mortal again, maybe then kill the witches and then drink the thing. Mm, yeah. But he waits until he's mortal. Like, they could have killed him as well, because they're still witches. Not that they did anything, but, you know. I think three witches overcome normal pirate dude. <laughs> no, they have swords. <laughs> what if he became mortal again, and then he died of, like, syphilis and whatever diseases that he had when he was human? Yeah. <laughs> back in the pirate days. <laughs> Uh, off screen, they heal Paige with the Fountain of Youth. Uh, but before they do that, Piper destroys the fountain before they give her anything. <laughs> yeah, she's like, there's still enough in here, probably. What if you drop the cup? What a dum-dum. What if there wasn't really enough in there? <laughs> yeah. What? A... <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> probably we can enough. We can uh... just cut it. We can make more of it if we just cut it with my lactated poison. <laughs> <laughs> Real cutting. <laughs> uh, Sheridan shows up along with uh, Daryl and Brody, and she's got her gun up. Um, I guess they just followed them to the pirate lair in whatever dimension that was in. Uh, and then Brody tranquilizes her. He's like, I got you, fam. And they mm -hmm. just accept this. The strange man comes and tranks her, and we're cool. Yeah. Well, you know, it was urgent to actually go save Paige, I guess. I'm, like, trying to save the other witch, which was who gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, they go back home, having saved approximately no one but themselves. <laughs> <laughs> like usual. <laughs> yeah, feeling, feeling pretty satisfied about their day's work. <laughs> <laughs> Find uh, Leo passed out in a bed full of uh, horrified children and diapers. <laughs> yeah. 
he it, it's supposed to be a cute scene of like you know the dad passed out with the kids like the baby sleeping next to him but the kid who plays wyatt is notably awake and horrified looking mm-hmm. <laughs> he's like staring at the wall like <laughs> <laughs> Like he just found like like Leo died of a, a heroin overdose next to him and he was <laughs> left with the corpse for hours. The way Piper's looking at him too, it's kinda like he will beg for death. <laughs> Whoops. I will I will teach him to fall asleep on the job. <laughs> Uh, while he's passed out from uh, eating a bunch of pot brownies or whatever he was doing, um, the theater dad elder shows up to warn uh, Piper about the gathering storm. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of really like a comedically short conversation. He just teleports in. Yo, storm's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out, ass face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Surprise, bitch. <laughs> Wow. A gathering Storm also seemed like another foreshadowing thing that they wrote when they didn't have any idea what they were going to do with the Avatar thing. Yeah. I feel like that didn't go anywhere either. Because mm-hmm. he's uh, echoing something the pirate said earlier in the episode as well. Right. And then they end with the stupid scene with Phoebe and Nick Lachey having sex in the office uh, and uh, the episode farts to a close. Yeah. About what I'd call that. <laughs> Porn music's out. <laughs> <laughs> Phelan, what are your overall thoughts on Charmed? Pile of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Was that it? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I said about... Like, oh no, there's not much else to say, I don't think. They don't save anyone, they act like entitled idiots, and... Ugh, they're miserable, they're so miserable. (laughs) I just, I can't overlook the fact they don't bother to tell that girl or girlfriend's dead. (laughs) Or even have a slight bit of remorse over it. (laughs) It's horrible. The pirate's makeup's unfortunate. Like we said, that actor seems like he could probably do something better in a better written role. Mm -hmm. I I bet he was in a lot of stuff. Yeah. His Max von Sydow-ish voice was probably the highlight of the episode. (laughs) I'm going to look him up. I bet he's played a pirate before. He's in Fargo. Paint your wagon as Rotten Luck Willie! (laughs) Uh... He's been going in all paint your wagon, going all paint it good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he's a real uh, old school actor. Mm. You could tell too that he was more seasoned. Yeah, uh, I would say he is the highlight of the episode, uh, but everything else is pretty garbage. It's uh, in a garbage season during a bunch of garbage storylines. Um, it's the most unoriginal one we've watched, and maybe the most unoriginal Charmed ever, to be honest. Mm-hmm. It's uh, astoundingly lazy, and the parts that they've changed for their story, it's just, it's written really badly. Yeah. And mm. the characters are about as unlikable as they've ever been, and, um, ugh. Yeah, trying to make Paige more vain is not a good idea. You don't need vain, vainer, and vainest. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, that's all I gotta say about uh, Charmed. And I think that's it uh, for this time on Charmed Hard with a Vengeance slash Charmed Rewind. (laughs) Uh, If you guys enjoyed watching this or listening to this, uh, I'd appreciate it if you left us a comment or subscribed or uh, if you tweeted about it. Hashtag. What what, what are some hashtags we should do this week? (laughs) This time. I shouldn't say this week. (laughs) Hashtag vain, vain, and vain. (laughs) <laughs> like they're a law firm <laughs> yeah <laughs> hashtag pirate basement party <laughs> uh, no I got no other hashtags for this one This that's good it's a good amount of hashtags <laughs> hashtag, hashtag pirates of the decepticons <laughs> <laughs> still you'll it'll be a thing <laughs> yeah sure why not <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next time. See you, Charmanders. 
Peace out.